Hola, hola, hola. Muy buenas tardes, mi familia sindical. Good evening, my union family. Welcome to the 2023 NEA National Leadership Summit. My name is Gladys Fatima Marquez, and I'm a proud high school bilingual ELL teacher from the great state of Illinois. Thank you, Gladys. And I am Mark Jewell. My pronouns are he and him, and I'm a proud elementary school educator from Greensboro, North Carolina. And we serve on the NEA Executive Committee and on the Summit Design Team. So let's give it up for DJ Kimmett. Yes, he's rocking it tonight. Thank you. Thank you, DJ Kimmett, for getting us started. All right, by a show of hands, how many first timers do we have here joining us tonight? Look at that, amazing. Let's give a round of applause. Yes. We'd like to begin by thanking the members of the NEA Leadership Design Team and the Center for Governance Leadership Development Team for creating what President Pringle has described as fertile ground where each of us can share, explore, expand, and plant the seeds of our continued leadership development. You see, this is a place, a, a, a place for you to invest in you. This is all about leadership development. You see, there are more than 100 breakout sessions that will help you expand your awareness of one or more of the seven domains in the NEA Leadership Competency Framework. You will also have the opportunity to make some critical decisions about what you will do back home to promote our collective action around the NEA's strategic priority goals. Through our Digital Engagement Initiative, or PAL, which stands for Prioritize, Activate, and Lead, you will have the opportunity throughout the summit to engage and take action on NEA's priority areas through the Summit app. We also have our think tank engagements. You see, under President Pringle's leadership, NEA is continuing a visioning process that we began last year. And we invite you to learn about and join this visioning work here this weekend. These engagements will provide clarity about the collective picture of our work that will help us do three things. Reimagine public education, create an enterprise-wide system of leadership development, and expand our culture of organizing to meet the needs of our students, our members, and the public schools that we all love. Thank you, Gladys. Here's our ask. At the entrance to this room, just outside the doors you came in, you will find posters with some probing questions. Each one of the vision areas plus one from the Future Assessment Task Force. We invite you to talk with each other about these questions and to uh, write down your thoughts and leave them for others to reflect on. You can also find the links to these questions in the Summit app. We will collect the combined thinking and add it to the growing body of work that we are reviewing. We are excited to invite you into this visioning work with us, so please give us your best thinking and let's create our future together. And don't forget to visit the PAC table. Yes. The PAC yes. table is right next to the registration desk. And if we want to uh, give all of our students the, uh, the leadership that they deserve and the schools that they deserve, we need to elect champions at the federal and state level who will fight for our neighborhood public schools. So as we come together this weekend with the theme of joy, justice, and excellence, the strength of educators, the brilliance of students, and the power of community, let us be reminded that we cannot become what we need to by remaining where we are. So the summit is designed to help us to become what we need to be for our students, for our schools, and for each other. So this weekend, our thinking will be challenged. A way of doing business, our way of organizing, and our way of communicating, and our way of leading will be challenged. So let's get ready, NEA leaders, to become what we need. And their agenda for the opening session is exciting, and we have a lot more in store. But before we, uh, I introduce our next, next speaker, I do have an important announcement I wanted to share. And please bear with me, because this was, uh, just came to us. As the Leadership Summit begins, please, please, participants, be aware of some potential threats at the conference. We have received word from Salesforce, who is also meeting here in San Francisco, that the right-wing activist group Project Veritas 
has tried to infiltrate their conference to secretly record attendees. So please uh, remove your summit credentials when you are not in the convention center and be mindful of your surroundings and conversations. And if you have any experience to report, please reach out to NEA executive committee members, Hannah Van Dring and, or Robert Rodriguez, who will be with us this evening at hvandring at nea.org and rrodriguez at nea.org. And please be safe. And with that, you all, Please give an NEA welcome to Alma Galapan, CTA member, to lead us in our land acknowledgement. Yes. We, the National Education Association, acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Ramaytush Ohlone, the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. as the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramaytush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as the caretakers of this place, as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. This acknowledgement, in accordance with the NEA's identity and mission of promoting democracy, justice and professional excellence demonstrates a commitment to beginning the process of working to dismantle ongoing legacies of settler colonialism and to recognize the hundreds of indigenous nations who continue to resist, live, and uphold their sacred relations across their lands. As guests, as guests, we recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. We wish to pay our respect to indigenous elders past, present, and future, and to those who have stewarded this land throughout the generations by affirming their sovereign rights as First Peoples. Indigenous people, shine your light, we are equal. I remember the days when our prayers were illegal. I remember the days when being Indian was lethal. Yeah, we had a rough past, but get ready for the sequel. Get ready for the glorious comeback of our people. All you warriors of love, all you answers to the prayers of our ancestors from above. I can feel it in my heart. Can you feel it in your blood? I can hear the seven fire calling us to wake up, wake up. All nations rise, rise up, cause now's the time. We don't have to hide anymore, cause now's the time. With forgiveness as my bow and my prayers as my arrows, pull them back and let go. I watch them fly like sparrows, have hope. Yeah, have hope. With compassion as my shield and faith down to my marrow, I will walk the pollen path even when it gets narrow. Yeah, yeah, I resurrect. Yes, you can bet. That we seen the single mama raising children on the res. We seen domestic violence tear apart what we have left. We seen the alcohol take it all and leave us dead. We seen the children take their lives when they can't take the dread anymore. It's a war. Can't take the dread anymore. It's a war. No, we can't take the dread anymore. It's a war. No, we can't take the dread anymore. It's a war. It's a war, but we've seen it all before And now we know we can change it Cause that's why we were born We know we are the ones that we have been waiting for We are the ones Grandma has been praying for So rise up, 
All you warriors of love, all you answers to the prayers of our ancestors from above. I can feel it in my heart, can you feel it in your blood? I can hear the seven fire calling us to wake up, wake up. Pueblo so levántense, es nuestro tiempo. No tienes que esconderte más. Ahora es nuestro tiempo. Mujer indígena, tú eres tan sagrada. Traigas medicina de tu suelo todavía A pesar del abuso de tu cuerpo y tu tierra Respetamos tus ancestros y la suya cultura Hombre indígena, tú eres honorable Y yo veo la fuerza que todavía sobrevive A pesar del abuso de tu raza venerable Yo respeto tus ritos, tus danzas, tus padres Somos guerreros del amor y guerreros de la paz sí, no vamos a escondernos más Somos guerreros del amor y guerreros de la paz sí, no vamos a escondernos más They say that history is written by the victors. But how can there be a victor when the war isn't over? The battle has only just begun. And Creator is sending his very best warriors. And this time, it is an Indians versus Cowboys. Now, this time, it is all the beautiful races of humanity together on the same side. And we are fighting to replace our fear with love. And this time, bullets, arrows, and cannonballs won't save us. The only weapons that are useful in this battle are the weapons of truth, faith, and compassion. Indigenous people, shine your light, we are equal. I remember the days when our prayers were illegal. I remember the days when being Indian was lethal. Yeah, we had a rough past, but get ready for the sequel. Get ready for the... Thank you. Good evening, NEA. My name is Hannah Vandering. I'm an elementary physical education teacher from Oregon and a member of your NEA executive committee. And I'm Robert Rodriguez, a teacher from middle school special education teacher from California and a proud member of the NEA executive committee. The NEA has adopted a standard of conduct policy to ensure that all of our gatherings are welcoming to all and free from discriminatory, harassing, or otherwise unacceptable behavior. Discrimination or harassment based on race, color, ethnicity, origin, sexual orientation, disability, or any other characteristic protected by law will not be tolerated. Our emails from my colleague Hannah Vander and myself are displayed on the screen. As Robert shared, our standards of conduct are designed to ensure that all NEA events are welcoming and free from discrim discriminatory, harassing, or otherwise unacceptable behavior. To create this space, we ask that all participants who are joining us respect each other, recognize and value individual differences. We look to promote mutual respect, understanding and cooperation, and that we act in accordance with high standards of professionalism to maintain the reputation of the National Education Association. We also ask that participants respect the right that each of our members have to express their viewpoints, even if those viewpoints are not our viewpoints, and even if it may be critical of NEA, its policies, its officers and staff. And finally, we do not restrict any speech or conduct that is protected by the Labor Management Reporting and Disclosure Act. Thank you for all you'll do to ensure that this is a safe, welcoming space for all. Again, if you do experience any harassment or discriminatory behavior, please contact Robert or myself and again, our addresses are on the screen. The NEA standards of conduct are included in the Summit app, along with the reporting form. 
Thank you for your commitment to ensure a positive event for all. Enjoy the rest of the summit, and please welcome to the stage our colleague, Dirk Andrews. Yay! Hi, I'm Dirk Andrews, an educator from Wyoming and a member of the summit design team. I have the privilege of introducing our student poets tonight. They come, I'll wait, yes. <laughs> They come to us all the way from Kansas. We are excited to welcome Ben Jackson and Aliko Kundaze. Ben Jackson is a junior at Olathe South High School in Olathe, Kansas. He is passionate about music and has studied classical and jazz piano since the third grade. Aliko is a junior in the Engineering Academy at Olathe Northwest High School in Olathe, Kansas. Alico has been on the build sub team of the 1710 First Robotics Challenge team for three years and is a trumpet section leader for the ONW Ravens Band. Their mothers are educators and members, and are here attending the summit as well. Please give a warm applause to Erica Jackson and Melissa Ecker. Ben and Alico are also students of Angie Powers from Kansas. And I know Angie is beaming with pride as well. Angie, can you stand up? Is she here yet? Oh, Angie. We'll celebrate her again, I promise. <laughs> Maybe not like this, but we'll do it. <laughs> In a moment, Ben and Alico are going to share a poem co-written by them. This poem was written and selected as a winning submission as part of KNEA's just Imagine Justice campaign. This campaign is an outgrowth of the affiliates' work to advance racial and social justice. The campaign provides an avenue for students to find their truth and their voice to amplify young creators in Kansas' schools. Ben and Alico's poem can be found in the Summit Program book. Please welcome Ben and Alico. When Ms. Powers gave us the opportunity to write for the Just Imagine Justice campaign, we were excited to compete for, of course, the prize, but also for an opportunity for our voices to be heard, to stand up and help in the fight for equality and for justice. We wanted to show our support in any way we could during a time of fear, especially after the injustice of the previous year. On top of that, we were also looking to show that we would not stay silent when authority clashed with our beliefs. So we decided to participate in the competition and were inspired to write about a topic that involved injustice, inequality, and one that went against our beliefs, police brutality. We also knew of its controversy in the present, with many downplaying the blatant acts of hate to the point of murder by victimizing themselves and those accused of the brutality and finding ways to blame the true victims. We saw people being discriminated against for things out of their control, gender, sexual orientation, and especially race. Not caring that things about these, or not caring that talking about these things were seen as controversial we chose to do our part in confronting the inequality that people were facing by using racial discrimination and police brutality as a fuel for our poem. This information allowed us to express our feelings towards police brutality in a way that was more grounded in reality. Our poem molded this information with our feelings on the topic to create what you see today. We were happy to stand up for something we believed in and wouldn't have it any other way. And without further ado, our poem. 
I fight with love. I fight with kindness. I fight with mercy. I fight with hope. I fight with justice. I fight with my words. I fight with my actions. They fight with hate. They fight with anger. They fight with selfishness. They fight with despair. They fight with inequity. They fight with vulgarity. And they fight with violence. I fight for change. I fight to see a future with differences. I fight for equality. They fight for change. They fight to see a future with differences. They fight for inequality. Derek Chauvin fought with his gun. Derek Chauvin fought with his rashness. Derek Chauvin fought with his authority. George Floyd couldn't fight with his words. George Floyd couldn't fight with his hands tied up and while grappled to the concrete. George Floyd couldn't fight with his innocence. Derek Chauvin choked George Floyd to death. Timothy Lohman fought with his gun. Timothy Lohman fought with his hate. Timothy Lohman fought with his privilege. Tamir Rice couldn't fight. Tamir Rice didn't have time to fight. Tamir Rice couldn't fight with his innocence. Tamir Rice couldn't fight an adult. He was only 12. Timothy Lohman shot Tamir Rice to death. Richard Black Jr. couldn't fight. Darren Hunt couldn't fight. John Crawford III couldn't fight. Ayanna Stanley Jones couldn't fight. Justin Howell couldn't fight. Sean Monterosa couldn't fight. Jamel Floyd couldn't fight. Dante Wright couldn't fight. Ray Shard Brooks couldn't fight. Daniel Prude couldn't fight. Couldn't, couldn't fight. fight. Couldn't, couldn't fight, fight. Couldn't, couldn't fight, fight. Couldn't, couldn't fight. fight. Couldn't, couldn't fight. fight. So many lives unrecognized, unable to fight this cruel authority. So I stand up and help fight for the minority. Thank you. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight but not our lioness. Oh, no, no, no. She is ever alert. She's watching the enemy, protecting her own and others, waiting to spring forward as needed. Her frenemies are alert to her every movement, but she knows them all by their actions, their intentions, and their sounds. She doesn't fear that laughing hyena because our lioness knows that their sound does not resonate with educated minds. Our lioness is known for her intelligence, for her sharp mind, her ability to speak the truth fluently. She watches the hippo and, well, he's no enemy. She's aware that it is not necessary to roll around in the mud to get attention. Our lioness keeps her actions and her ideals pure and to the point. She knows it's her responsibility to lead and not to be turned aside by being lured to be comfortable and cool. Her dedication is to organize to roar when needed, and like the piranha, to show her teeth as she has to when attacked. We know she'll not fool around when she's ready to move ahead. Like the giraffe, our lioness is willing to stick her neck out because she knows what's at stake if she fails to protect and lead her family safely high ideals and high alert are a natural part of her demeanor. Being prepared is an ingrained instinct for her. She's always reaching up and out for her family. As our lioness moves through her jungle, she's always ready for every snake in the grass. Her steps may be cautious as she goes about, 
that she strikes with lightning when it's necessary to stop the poisonous venom that spews from the mouth of her enemies. If called a bone, there's no doubt that our lioness will snarl and growl and attack her enemies with a furious bite like no other, for she knows she must lead and then her friends will follow. The elephant in the room is addressed as she fears not the size nor the approach of its shadow. Standing toe to toe and looking her enemies in the eye is in itself a threat to those who walk about seeking to devour. The gorilla may shout and pound his chest, but that action and the action on the part of our lioness speaks volumes. She does not get scared when approached or she's threatened. Our lioness brings joy to our hearts with her own enthusiasm in her spirit. She lives to see justice in every action and excellence is her ultimate goal. Our NEA lioness moves with beauty and with grace because she is armed with love, with dedication, and with knowledge that what she must do, she will do, and there's no stopping her. NEA, please welcome a protector, a dedicated leader, the president of the largest labor union in America, our own lioness, <laughs> President Becky Pringle. What an honor to be introduced by the president of our NEA Retired. Give Sarah another round of applause. Oh. oh my goodness, you look fabulous. So, speaking of elephants, I, I, I need to start here. As you know, the Super Bowl was stolen from my Eagles. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't talk about it yet. I'm not ready. <laughs> Congratulations, Casey. But Noel tells me that it's time to focus on baseball now. <laughs> Go Phillies! Uh, so I decided to watch 42 again. I know, right? Ma you know, mainly Chad Chadwick Boseman, you know, I just watch all his movies over and over again. What can I tell you? Uh, um, uh, but let me tell you this, I, it not only pushed me to read more about Jackie Robinson and his incredible, selfless, brave and committed activism, even as he knew the weight of such a pivotal time, the first, right? That weight was on his shoulders. He, he still found a way to continue his activism while the piercing and critical eyes of the world were watching. And then I watched After Jackie. It's a documentary that focuses on three more legends that follow, Bill White, Bob Gibson, Noel knows. Some of you might not know this, Noel knows, right? Kurt Flood, black baseball players who struggled long after Jackie Robinson became the first. After Jackie documents 
the challenges these athletes and activists faced as they played at the highest level of their game and stood in that moment fighting for change, for the freedom to play the game they loved with respect and equality and dignity. They understood that freedom is not a state. Freedom is an act. It is not some enchanted garden perched high on a distant plateau where we can finally sit down and rest. Freedom is a continuous action we must all take. In each generation, we must do our part to create a more fair and more just society. The late Congressman John Lewis, yeah. Mm. who you know led the Bloody Sunday March across the Edmund Pettus Bridge nearly six decades ago, just this past Tuesday. What he expressed in those words were the magnitude of the responsibility each of us, all of us has to make freedom an act continuously. He knew that much like a baton passes from one hand to another during each leg of a relay race, the struggle for equity and justice and freedom passes from one generation to the next. I see you, NEA. I see you holding out your hand to take that baton with all of your resilience and brilliance, your tireless advocacy, your unwavering commitment, and that unapologetic activism. As our nation's largest labor union, yeah, and the crowd goes wild, <laughs> You take continuous action each and every day to create a more just and more fair society for every one of our students. You also understand that the issues we face in public education and as education professionals are not unique to the United States. They are felt in communities all around the world. NEA is proud to work with education professionals across the globe to secure the respect that educators deserve and to ensure a great public education for every student. Yeah. So, I am so excited that we have some of our international allies here with us for the NEA Leadership Summit. Yes, we do. Yeah. I need them to stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Turn around so they can see you. Turn around so they can see you. Give them a warm NEA welcome. Yeah. Now, I need to warn you, I met with them earlier today, and one of the, because you know you can't meet with me and, not, and there's not going to be an ask. So I asked them, as they attend sessions with you, to learn about what we're doing here in the United States, I asked them to actually pull some of you aside and ask you some questions. Yeah, because they want to learn directly from you. 
our practitioners who are with our students every day. Um, so please make me look good. Okay. All right. NEA leaders, you chose to join us at this, our 2023 NEA Leadership Summit. Yeah, yeah, here we are. All together, right? Because you understand that to be prepared for, to be supported in, and to be joyous about taking that continuous action, you must learn and grow and network. You must ask those tough and compelling questions and seek those creative answers. I am so grateful that you are here to do just that. I see your commitment to developing and honing your skills as leaders in our association, in our schools, in our communities, on our campuses, in our work sites, all across this country. Grounded by the seven NEA leadership competencies, advocacy, communication, governance and leadership, leading our professions, organizing, strategizing, and protecting the association's fiscal health, all while nurturing your own and others' social and emotional health. You are here sharpening your skills, building our learning communities, opening up your hearts and minds to the possibilities. You are fueling your resolve to lead. You are meeting this moment that requires us to protect our democracy by calling out those who don't believe our students have the right to learn in a safe environment. You are pushing back against those who are citing culture wars, those who want to keep our parents and educators divided, who want to ban books, punish teachers, discriminate against already marginalized youth. And we know why, right? We know why. All of those schemes and disrespect are causing our educator shortage to spiral out of control in every single one of our career families. Let us be clear, though. This chronic crisis is not because there is a shortage of people who would want to answer the call to help love and guide and teach the next generation. What we have is a shortage of professional pay for our educators. That's what we have. What we have is a shortage of basic dignity. That's what we have. What we have is a shortage of respect for the people who have dedicated their lives to educating America's students. As a result of that, we have a shortage of people who are willing to take on the immense responsibility of becoming an educator because they believe that they will not receive the requisite rec recognition of the critical role they play in our society, in our democracy. That's why you stood up this past fall, didn't you? You showed all the way out, NEA, all the way out. You use your collective strength to deliver wins all over this country. That's what you did. Look at you. This union, three million strong, demonstrated un
undeniable power and unwavering purpose to elect allies up and down the ballot. Yes, you did. From school boards to state legislatures, from governors to thank you, Georgia, thank you, Pennsylvania, thank you, Nevada, yeah, senators, yeah. And guess what else we did? We elected hundreds of NEA members to offices all over this country, yeah. We prove that parents and voters are on our side, that they share the values we stand for. More support for mental health for our students, professional pay for our educators, equitable funding for our schools, gun violence prevention, yes! The freedom to learn racial justice, LGBTQ rights, voting rights, women's rights, America stood with us, NEA, because you dared to lift your voice every day to tell your story all across this nation. That's what you did. winning. So much winning! And you didn't stop with just winning um, pro, for pro-public education and pro-union and pro-student and pro-education candidates. You're already delivering on those wins. Governors and President Biden, yeah, that we helped elect or re-elect have already proposed budgets that will increase funding for our schools by hundreds of millions of dollars. That has already happened. They're centering our students. They're supporting us. They're fighting for public education. They are fighting for unions to exist. That's what you did, NEA. And not just that, we're winning in our locals too, right? And yes, we are. In Jefferson County, Colorado, where are ya? Yeah. Educators won a 22% increase. Yeah. In Massachusetts, where they took on, oh, uh, there you are. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You need to thank them. Where they took on fairness in taxing our ESP members, our ESP members in Malden won a $9,000 immediate raise. Yes, yeah! And in Texas, yeah! Ooh, a salary campaign waged by the Colleen Education Association led to their board approving an 8% raise for their teachers and a 6% raise for all district employees. So much winning! Standing with our, our, our allies and our partners, who share the belief uh, that our students, everyone, deserve to be surrounded with resources and love so they can be their fullest selves now and become those caring and courageous adults we need to be the leaders of a just society. You know, I have more than three decades of experience as a middle school science teacher. That's right. All right, Duff, that was your cue to say, you, you gotta be kidding me, Becky. You, you don't look that. Too late, too late. Um, so my fellow science teachers in the, in the room, do I have some? Yeah. 
you know that it's, 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 it's about during those, those middle school years that students um, begin to learn about the principle of ultimate tensile strength, the ability of a material to resist tearing due to tension. Ultimate tensile strength. <laughs> That's what you have. You are stretched and you are pulled. You are disrespected and disregarded. You have been blamed and criticized. You have been underpaid and overworked and underappreciated, but your strength allows you to look for the hope and the opportunities that exist at the core of every challenge. NEA, I hope you're proud that you join, yeah, you should just be proud every day. <laughs> I hope you're proud that you joined a band author and educator, educator, Bell Hooks. That's right. She's not banned in here. You joined her in believing that hope is essential to any political struggle for radical change. I see your strength that is founded in that hope. It's on display all across this nation. And our students, oh my God, give it up for our student poets again. They were so fabulous, right? Yeah. Go, KNEA. Go on with your bad self. <laughs> Look what you did. Our students, while our members in Florida are with undaunted determination standing fearlessly against a hateful, spiteful, dangerous governor who, like too many others, are focused on destroying our nation's public schools. Get them out and don't bring them anywhere else. We on that. Believe. Our students, in the midst of all of that, our students are using their own voices to call out those who are using their position for political gain. During my visit to Florida, as I listened to Elijah and Juliet and Victoria answer the question that a reporter posed, how does this ban on AP African Americans, uh, African American studies, impact you as students? Their cogent and eloquent and passionate answers reminded me of how amazing our students are. As two black students and one white student described the loss of the opportunity to, to learn about themselves and each other, I knew they reflected the best of America our beautiful diversity, our unwavering determination, our constant striving to be better. These brilliant students know the importance of the right to see themselves mirrored in the books they read and to be that, that window so they can see each other. So NEA, we will fight every attempt by partisan, pretentious, polarizing politicians to divide our communities and destroy public education. Every attempt. We will not allow those money-grubbing fascists to limit our students' ability to develop their critical thinking skills and collaborative problem-solving abilities. We won't stand for that. We will, as NEA, stand in the way of their march toward unfettered power. Not on our watch, we're not having that. We will fight 
support a school environment steeped in excellence and caring and compassion where they can experience the joy of learning the education justice that is their right. And every educator, every educator deserves the right to be respected as the professionals they are. Everyone. So I need you to listen, because I'm coming back for you. As NEA mounts a campaign to strengthen and promote, protect, and save public education, I need you to understand that at the core of this fight resides a fun, foundational belief in this premise that John F. Kennedy articulated over 60 years ago. An educated citizen knows how much more there is to know. They know that knowledge is power. Our enemies know that too. That's why they're doing what they're doing. They know that only an educated and informed people will be a free people. That the ignorance, listen to this, the ignorance of one voter in a democracy impairs the security of all, of all. So I need you, NEA, I need you to fully embrace your profound responsibility to help us unite not just our members, but this entire nation to reclaim public education as a common good, as the foundation of this democracy. And I can't, you can't stop there. I need you to help us transform public education into something it was never designed to be, a racially and socially just and equitable system that prepares every student, every student, every one of our babies to succeed in this diverse and interdependent world. I need you to do that, NEA. That's what I need. You and I both know, all of us know, that public ed that common good is under attack. Public education itself is at risk. But NEA, united in our pursuit of what? Joy and justice and excellence, focus on the strength of educators, the brilliance of our students, and the power of community, we will change what's happening in our world. We will do what we can, NEA, and we must for our students and for our families and for our communities all across this nation. To do that, I need you to fully, fully understand Dr. King's challenge to us. We not only have the right to be free, we have the duty to be free. We have the duty to be free. NEA, we have a duty to be free to fight for our students' right to be valued and respected, to be loved, to be their authentic selves, to be the whole humans they are. NEA, we have the duty to be free, to stand against tyranny and oppression and hatred and bigotry. NEA, we have a duty to keep our babies safe. We have a duty to be free, to stand in our power. NEA, we have a duty to do what we know is right. Yeah. 
Because you and I know that our children are watching us. They're watching us. They are depending on us to be worthy of them. NEA, I know that you can, and I know you will stand up to your duty to be free. Thank you so very much for all you do for our students and for our colleagues and for this country and for this world. Thank you so very much, NEA. I love you. Onward. <laughs> oh, I love you, I love you. I have the honor and the privilege and excitement to introduce someone who uses history as an educator, a phenomenal educator, to reimagine what learning looks like for students. His work is actually redefining Phrases like smartness and academic success and the best and the brightest. He shows every educator that when we provide our students with the tools of self-love and identity and truth, we're actually giving them the very tools they need to thrive. NEA, please give a powerful and passionate welcome to the phenomenal, the incredible, the amazing Dr. Christopher Emden. Get up, get up, get up, and give it up. So, so greetings. Um, I, I am um, deeply humbled to be here to share space with you today. Um, I, I get invitations to have conversations with folks all the time about the landscape of education and public education. And um, none of those invitations means as much to me as the one I have right now, because I am fully aware that I am in the presence of those who literally will change the world. I, I, I want to begin our conversation this evening with, uh, with just an analysis of this idea of a leadership summit. And to do so, I'm going to define the word summit. Summit, top, apex, especially the highest point, the topmost level attainable, the highest level of officials, a conference of highest level officials. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cheryl Bost. I'm a fourth and fifth grade teacher from the proud state of Maryland. <laughs> representing over 75,000 educators, and I'm a member of the design team. Hi, everyone. I am Erica Jones, president of the Mississippi Association of Educators. Along with Sher, we served as two state affiliate presidents on the Leadership Summit design team. So now is the time for prizes. And we would like to thank our primary sponsor, NEA member benefits, for their continuous and generous support of the summit and their overall commitment to educators. Give it up for NEA member benefits. NEA member benefits and their partners are here throughout the weekend. So please stop by their tables in the South Lobby, and they're also leading a breakout session during the summit. It is because of member benefits that we are able to make a few of you all happy tonight. <laughs> We're getting ready to announce the winners of the 2023 Summit. Six of you will receive $150 courtesy of NEA member benefits. It really does pay to be a member. Our winners were randomly selected from registered member participants. If your name is called, you will receive a follow-up email from the NEA leadership development team. Drum roll, please. All right, are you ready? Call my name. 
I got you, Erica. I got yeah. you. <laughs> All right, our winners are Caitlin Carmen from Kentucky Education Association. And from Ohio Education Association, David Grimes. <laughs> Just a little excited. From the California Teachers Association, Ava Ruiz. And from a colder state, I think, Indiana State Teachers Association, Kelly Watts. And we have Jessica Sutton from Pennsylvania State Education Association. And Somaya Kasha from New Hampshire Education Association. Congratulations to those winners. Now, if your name wasn't called, Erica, I know I didn't call your name, so we're gonna work on that because you have many more opportunities to win throughout the weekend. So again, let's thank NEA Merma Benefits. Let's give it up for all of our speakers tonight, our lioness, Becky Pringle. We hope you enjoyed your opening plenary and we will see you shortly at one of the social events and networking opportunities. Have a good evening and we start fresh tomorrow morning. Good evening.